Plus the next day we flew off and uh, um, my goodness, our bags, all right, were stuck in Belgium, of all places, Brussels airport. And for me, that's just fun and funny. Our luggage is stuck in Europe and it's all of the equipment is stuck in Europe. Why? Because this documentary, this movie is going to be so powerful that the devil doesn't want anybody to watch it, doesn't want these amazing shots to be captured. Because the second day, uh, the Lord told me to call up 10 deaf people. We called up 10 deaf people. They all came to the front and every single one of them had their ears opened. Every single one of them uh, and uh, again, language barrier, you're in the flow, you're in the anointing, in the crowd of thousands, you, you can't really get their full story. But whether they were partially deaf, fully deaf, deaf from birth, whatever happened, all 10 of them, young and old, hallelujah, they all were able to hear fine. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And even that day, the Lord spoke to me and said, Everybody who's practicing witchcraft, repent, throw off your amulets, any charms that you had, and throw it, get rid of it. People just started throwing it on stage. It was so amazing. People just took off these things. They're throwing it on stage. They're repenting and they're cutting ties with false religions and witchcraft and uh, sorcery and black magic. And they're throwing these things. It was just a fun, 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 massive move of God. And uh, just amazing, incredible. He's able to stand, to walk, but now he's able to stand, to dance, to do everything. You could see a dark cloud of rain. Like it was dark, dark cloud of rain. And we're praying like, Lord God, let it not rain, let it not rain. But interestingly, that region has been in a drought for three years. They didn't have rain. So atmosphere is thick. The largest crowd there, man, we're ready for a real massive move of God. Like something is happening. So we're ready and then we're there and atmosphere is thick. People are waiting, they're pressing in. Something's about to happen, all of a sudden just, the power went out, the generator went out, it's dark, the cloud is coming. <laughs> the power was going out like a number of times. Uh, and uh, you know, is it warfare or is God behind it? But praise God for the, the the choir, the team, everybody's working hard. You know, we're trying to flow and stay in the anointing. How do you conduct a crusade of 12,000 people when your power and your mic is out? And what do you do, God? You know, are you going to give us a supernatural voice so it echoes through, like, you know, when Jesus preached to the multitude? Like, what's going to happen here? It poured, I'm telling you, it poured. And it was like a hurricane came through right there. It poured. And uh, we're just wet sitting in the car. We're just all laughing like, God had the last word. God finished it. And the greatest miracle of all was the curse of drought was broken. And sometimes you can get so caught up in the busyness of ministry, uh, flowing out of your gift rather than really capturing your heart. Because you're, you're, it's so fast paced. It's just come in, come out. You're not, it's not connecting with your heart. I'm sure you, you understand what I mean. And for me, I want to fight for my heart being moved, not just my gift, not just, uh, you know, my head, my thoughts, you know, from event to event. But I want to be moved. I want to be fully present. I want to fully feel and experience what's going on there. And uh, we went to the orphanage, Pastor John Mark's uh, children's home. And these kids, man, they just got me, my heart. It just felt so moved. And in that place, God was there.
he was so there and I was so moved by the purity, by the beauty of these children's faces. And that moment, everything around me just stopped. And I zoomed into this moment with connected with this little girl, this precious little girl. And I zoomed into this moment. Everything around me just stopped. I, it's like the breath of heaven was pulled back. The veil of heaven was like, <gasps> the slow-mo. And I just, just geared, keyed into this moment with this girl. I think this is, I think this is the first moment where my heart's actually connecting. Where the whole time has been the gift. And now my heart is, I'm fighting for my heart to connect to her. And I was just so moved. And that's when all the prophecies that God gave me, everything that God spoke to me, everything that I knew, all of a sudden, all of those things just faded away, went into the background. And the Father Heart of God came in and said, this is why you're here, Ben. So Ben, thank you for coming. They all just ran up to the stage. There was something happening, guys. And then they all ran up to the stage. And I, I saw in the spirit this lady on my right side. And here I am. I'm, I'm ministering and for about the first five, ten minutes. You know, we're flowing in song. We started singing, break every chain, break every chain. And we started singing that. And I saw this lady here in the, in the front right side. And I could see a demon in her eyes. I could see a spirit hovering over her. And I blew over her. And all of a sudden she flew back about five feet and she started manifesting demons and just going crazy. And that's when all hell tried to break loose. But that's when heaven broke loose, amen. Probably about 15 to 20 people. They started flying back 10, 15 feet. Under the power of God, people started getting delivered. Some of the, probably, the craziest manifestations of deliverances I've ever seen. And here they are, you know, they're, they're here, here, here. And that's when people started shipping off <laughs> these bodies of people like they were fish, you know? And, and the, uh, I'm so impressed. I've never seen anybody do the massive uh, crusade deliverances like that. It was fun. But when they started going, like people were flying, people were getting shoved and pushed. It was like, very strong manifestations and here they are 15 20 people on stage manifesting as snakes beasts some of the craziest manifestations i've ever seen and they started getting set free and delivered and uh that was amazing i mean that was holy 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 that was probably one of the most um powerful heavy anointings that uh, I've ever experienced uh, out of all these crusades and meetings in the world. And uh, it was just amazing and fun and powerful. And people were testifying about the healings, the miracles, people were testifying. And the next day, he even testified of the validity, the truth of it. And she had a new uterus. Isn't that crazy? Creative miracles are flowing in the meetings. Because when the glory of God comes, there's body parts, organs, there's muscles, bones, tissue, there's things that are created. 
eyes opening up, deaf ears. That's what happened. That's what we saw in Uganda. That's what we saw in Africa. It's just amazing. An amazing, powerful first night. And the next day, there were so many more people. Muslims. People were hiding their Muslim hats in fear and in shame so that the public wouldn't see them. People were converting folks. People were giving up their Muslim hats. Like, people were giving their lives to Jesus. It was just so fun, so amazing. And uh, uh, Bishop John Saleh repeatedly says that he's never, in 20 years of his ministry in, in Africa, he's seen the dead rays as well. But he said that in 20 years, he's never felt and seen that type of anointing. All the glory goes to God. But I think, man, when we steward our relationship with the Holy Spirit, when we know what we carry, and miracles happen. We take dominion over the atmosphere, a Muslim region. Hallelujah. It's called the Aris. For the last five years, she was feeling serious dizziness. But today when you pray, the power of God has touched her. She says he's completely free. Is diabetic, has been diabetic. It is going to be tested. But she says, she has not been feeling all right minus tablets. Without tablets, she would not feel well. But since yesterday, she has not swallowed any tablets. And is feeling well in the name of Jesus. She is now feeling okay. there at a miracle center and he brought us in there and it was through my son Sokoba Conrad that we got to meet with Pastor Robert Kayanja and man I'm telling you the atmosphere of worship in that church it was I'm a worshiper right if you know me you know atmosphere of heaven is the atmosphere of worship all right and uh, man that place miracle center it really is a miracle center Wow, my life was changed. This is the biggest church in all of Uganda. Pastor Benny Hinn ministers there. Uh, Robert Kayanja is the main one who, he, he's the main spiritual father, really, of Uganda. And here we are on stage meeting with this man of God. And uh, we get to share our heart for about 15, 20 minutes. And I get to release the word of the Lord over Uganda, over the church, over the people, and the honor, the love that I felt, that we felt. I mean, he sowed on stage, he sowed into our ministry uh, because he said that uh, Africans need to break the cycle of poverty. So therefore, every minister, every man of God who comes into Africa, they're going to sow, they're going to bless, they're going to give, and they did. My life has changed. Again, there's, there's been an anointing where we go to different nations. We meet with the influencers of influencers, wherever we go. It's a high governmental calling, folks. And I'm just so honored and humbled that God keeps connecting me with 
the giants and the greats. And we get to meet with the fathers and the mothers. And we get these open doors. We, we receive the welcome. We receive the prayer. We receive the blessing. Pastor Robert Kahn just said, please come back. Please come back. We want to see you again. We want to have you here. Please come back. My life is never the same, guys. That last final day in Uganda, where we went five days with our luggage, crazy, crazy miracles, bam, 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 bam. Just all of that. My heart's being changed. Oh, just getting whacked into glory. I love Africa. I love Uganda. And all of a sudden, the last day, last few hours, moments at this place, for me, that's exactly what I needed to do because I received that night where the whole week I was giving, giving, giving in every way. But in worship in that place, I just received and Man, I was rocked to the floor. More than any other worship atmosphere in America, Europe, or whatever I've ever been to. That place, there's something holy there, folks. Wow. I received an impartation. I'll never be the same again. Prophetic fulfillment happening right before my eyes. And that was how we ended our Uganda trip. And as they say, TIA, this is Africa.